Welcome back to High School Sports Home. We'll head over to Minto Field now for some action in boys lacrosse, and Nepeans look fairly strong so far this year. They lost their first game of the regular season to one of the top teams in Mother Teresa, but have responded quite well since then. Their game this week is against St. FX, and they wouldn't want to look ahead in the schedule. After this matchup, they're against one of the top teams in South Carlton, but they need to stay focused on this one if they wanted to take home the victory. St. Francis Xavier was riding a two-game winning streak when they took on Nepean in boys off the division lacrosse. Early in the game, St. Francis Xavier number 10, Ramasan, blew by the defenders and scored to give St. Francis Xavier a 1-0 lead. Five minutes later, Coyotes number 22, Castleman, found number 5, Morelli, in the slot, who scored to take a 2-0 lead. Morelli off the next faceoff received a pass from Ramasan and scored to take a 3-0 lead. And right after the next faceoff, Ramasan scored his second goal of the game to extend the lead to 4 0. Shortly after, Ramasan fed Morelli, who scored his third goal of the game, making it 5 0 for St. Francis Xavier. St. Francis Xavier number two, Fairholm, passed over to Morelli, who scored his fourth goal of the game, making it 6 0 St. Francis Xavier at halftime. In the second half, Coyotes number 22, Castleman, found number 20, Blair, who was in front of the net, to make it 7 0 St. Francis Xavier. Nepean's number 77, Patterson, scored later on to cut the lead down to 7-1. Right near the end of the game, Coyotes Morelli scored his fifth goal of the game. St. Francis Xavier extended their winning streak to three games with an 8-1 win. Two teams looking for their second win of the season in boys off the division lacrosse met on Tuesday as St. Mark's took on Franco Cite. Early in the game, St. Mark's number 10, Lang, scored to give his team a 1-0 lead. Shortly after, Franco Cite's number 24, Granton, responded with his own goal to tie the game at 1. Off the next faceoff, Granton scored again, making it 2-1 for Franco Cite. Falcons number 11, Gagné, fed number 14, Paquette, to push their lead to 3-1. Lions number 2, Patterson, scored shortly after to cut the lead to 3-2. In the second half, Franco Cite number 13, Chorus, scored to give his team a 4-2 lead. Later on, Falcons number 15, Belanger, scored to make it 5-2. Shortly after, teammate number 7, Monaghan, scored to make it 6-2. Near the end of the game, number 14, Pocket, found number 2, Lafontaine, to increase the lead to 7-2. Franco Cité won 7-2 and were able to get their second win on the season. In other to off the division lacrosse, John McCray met Mother Teresa, and it was McCray's number 5, Patterson, avoiding the checks as he drove to the net to give the Bulldogs an early 1-0 lead. Mother Teresa's number 21, Tate, cut in front from the corner and found number 15, Spinella, in front of and he made no mistake to tie the score at one goal each. The Bulldogs' Patterson was knocked down but kept control of the ball as he danced around the defenders and went straight to the net to put John McCray up 2-1. Mother Teresa would answer back as number 13, Thompson, brought the ball from behind the net and fired it away to even up the score at 2-2. John McCray's number 2, Sharon, carried the ball all alone and his shot went through the traffic to restore the Bulldogs' one goal lead. Patterson's shot from Faro gave him the hat trick and John McCray was up 4-2 leading into halftime. Early in the second half, the Titans' Tate found teammate number 22, McGeehan, wide open and he quickly made it a one goal game as Mother Teresa trailed 4-3. Shortly after, Tate faked out McCray's defenders and bounced his shot into the net to tie the game at four apiece. After the next faceoff, McGeehan carried the ball straight into the John McCray territory and fed number nine Davis on the doorstep, and Mother Teresa had their first lead at five to four. Thanks to a good pass from Tate, Davis scored his second of the game and gave Mother Teresa a two goal lead at six to four. The Bulldogs still had some bite in them as number five Patterson spun around and fired the ball into the mesh and John McCray now trailed six to five. Mother Teresa's McGeehan passed the ball to Davis who beat the goalie five hole and scored the hat trick to put Titans up seven to five. The Titan Simpson would close out the scoring as Mother Teresa defeated John McCray eight five in boys lacrosse matchup. In other lacrosse action, West Carlton took on South Carlton. It was South Carlton's number eight, Riley Sloan, with the original shot but the rebound came straight to number 66, Andrew Foster, who made it 1-0 in favor of the Storm. Sloan managed to pick up the loose ball and quickly drove it to the net and beat the goalie to put South Carlton up 2-0. Not long after, South Carlton's number 98, Cameron Miller, avoided the defender behind the net and cut in front, where he beat the goalie glove high to give the Storm a 3-0 lead. Late in the first half, the Storm's Riley Sloan calmly fired the ball from 15 yards out to put South Carlton in a comfortable 4-0 lead. Early in the second half, West Carlton's number 84, Faith, carried the ball down the field and had a good chance to put the Wolves on the board, but South Carlton's goaltender, Alex McLaughlin, 
knocked the ball away. The Wolves number eight, Hoekstra, came out from the corner and avoided a couple of checks to give West Carlton their first goal as they nail trailed four to one. Not long after, Storms number 92, Shane Driscoll, made the pass from behind the net to number 26, Josh Arts, for South Carlton's fifth goal. South Carlton defeated West Carlton 5-1. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Kyle Waddell. We've got our first action of the girls' rugby season, and the kickoff starts off with an absolutely fantastic matchup between two of the top teams in the city as Ashbury meets up with St. Peter. The 2016 girls rugby season kicked off with a battle between two of last year's awesome medalists as Ashbury took on St. Peter. Both teams started this match off strong but it was St. Peter's who scored with the first try from number three Grace Blunden with the conversion after it was 7-0. St. Peter's struck again with a try from Zanna Marti number eight as she fought off her way to the end of the field making a 12-0 game for St. Peter's. St. Peter's came right back with a try off a huge scramble from number one Sydney Weatherhall to make it 17 to zero. To close out the first half was a try down the right side from number eight Rosanna Marti, 22 to zero for St. Peter. St. Peter started off the second half with more offense after a try, the conversion by number 13 Katsaria to make it 29 to zero. Following up that was a far run down the outside by number 10, Taylor Donato to get the try for St. Peter to make it 34-0. From defense to offense, number five, Cassandra Lawrence was able to get the try, followed by the conversion, making it 41-0 for St. Peter. Number eight, Rosanna Marti with the hat trick as she broke free from the pack. The try and conversion after made it 48-0 for St. Peter. With minutes left, St. Peter's number one, Sydney Weatherhall, got the try to make it a final score of 53 to zero. The St. Peter Knights took the W in this one. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Keenan Kreller. After the break, we'll take a look at our first action in girls' touch football, but before we get to that, we'll finally have the action from Nepean and St. Peter meeting up in junior rugby. 